Georgia O'Keeffe once said, I found I could say things with colors and shapes that I couldn't say any other way, things I had no words for. The Wisconsin-born modernist artist understood the expressive power of art. In our Sunday morning spotlight, Daniela Cato witnessed self-expression through art on display during an art therapy session at Aurora St. Luke's Medical Center. These are some of the paintings that we have done. Making art simply for the sake of creation, to feel and to let it enlighten you in ways you are unable to do so on your own. It's wonderful, hours can go by and you're working on a project and it's like meditation only better because you're fully engaged, mind, body, spirit. You can almost see their whole body just relax as they're talking about this, of like this weight is now suddenly off of their shoulders. It's called art therapy, and it's a practice that serves as a healing tool. There's some clients where they really need to feel grounded and have that control. So you want to bring them something that is easily controlled and understood and manipulated like colored pencils. Or sometimes you have someone that is just too anxious and needing to let go of some of that control, in which case we may bring them something like a clay or a watercolor, something that really kind of requires them to let go of that control and have more of an experience. Erin Hine alongside Jill McNutt are art therapists at the Aurora St. Luke's Medical Center in Milwaukee. They lead a four hour long art studio session that takes place the second and fourth Friday of every month, serving people as young as three year olds and up to those in their 90s. For some, it's a form of meditation and for others, this is low, and there was so, and this is Trey, and we were three personalities of the person. And they came to me one day and said, it's time for us to integrate. So we walked. This is, of course, all inside. It's a chance to allow one's most inner thoughts to paint a message. Purple is suffering, and red is like pain anguish and so this is anguish pouring out of the middle of me. Zoe Tremblay was diagnosed with disassociative identity disorder also known as multiple personality disorder in 2017. She says she's now integrated about eight personalities within her body. Is it hard navigating that because you mentioned that you're sort of the mom right you sort of control the situation sometimes is it hard to keep them all in one space? I think that it's an more we're all on the same team and we all know that. The disorder often unfolds as a result of a traumatic experience. It could be violence, it could be neglect, or it could be, as it is in my case, severe repeated sexual abuse. And I think that it just evoked that for me, the red. Uh, the color, color has a lot of significance to me. Experts say art therapy has helped a number of patients who are facing life-changing illnesses, though caregivers and community members are also welcome to participate. We had a cancer patient who was estranged from her teenage daughter and they would come in week after week and just work together and the studio became the time when they really were able to sit with one another and just work. McNutt says she recalls a woman in her 50s going to art therapy for months at a time, awaiting to be called to receive a heart transplant. And one time she came down and every single thing she touched turned into a heart. No matter if she picked up a piece of paper, if she did a drawing, and that same weekend her heart came and she had her surgery. A reminder that art isn't just for kids and you don't need to be good at it. You just need to be willing to give it a try. Every single day I hear people telling me, I'm not an artist, I can only draw stick figures. To that I respond with, that is perfectly fine. 